Hey everybody, it's Flying Ryan here with a review of the Saima X8G. Uh, now this was sent to me in an X8W box because I think this was like an early sample model. Uh, so I've kind of edited the box here to remove any sort of uh, references to FPV or anything because this is not FPV. This is purely a recording video to an SD card on the camera and that's it. There's no FPV transmission. Um, there has been some confusion about that. I think maybe uh, some website list listings are saying that it's FPV, uh, but it is not. Um, anyway, this is the X8G, which um, is a really nice upgrade to the X8C. If you saw my review of the C model, uh, one of the things, I, the mainly the only complaint I had was that the camera just seemed like it was way uh like under it was just it wasn't it wasn't as good as the quad it was just really underwhelming uh very unimpressive um and this is basically the the answer to that and this camera is awesome uh this is let's see what is it this is an 8 megapixel uh 1080p camera or you can switch to 720 uh 60 frames a second it's only 30 frames a second in 1080p um but really nice, high quality footage, really impressive, kind of looks like a little uh, GoPro, kind of has a, a bit of a wide angle lens to it. Um, so really, really nice now. Now the camera actually, you know, lives up to the quality of the quad itself. And plus this new silver paint job is just really cool looking, I think. Uh, so all around, I'm just really impressed with this model now. I think it looks great. It's great for the price, it flies great, the camera quality is awesome. I would say this is probably the best entry level like RTF, um, you know, onboard uh, aerial video system now, you know, where it comes with its own camera. If you don't want to mount your own, you want to buy it and everything ready to go out of the box, I would say this is the best you can get right now. I mean, this video quality is better than any I've seen from any you know default onboard camera unless I replace it with my own Mobius or something like that um, and there it isn't a jello or it isn't like an anti-vibration mount or anything it's just kind of hard mounted onto there but like it's there's very little jello wobble if any at all so really impressive for you know how stable the video quality was and everything uh, just really, really nice camera. I'm really liking it. Uh, let's cover some of the stuff it comes with. It has the prop guards just like all the other models where you, you take out this little tab here on the edge of the motor mount and then the prop guards slide in and there's a couple screws to secure them in place. Uh, it comes with some tools and a card reader for the memory card. Uh, these are part of the prop system here. It does have a spare set of props. Oops. Uh, it also comes with a wall charger here that charges through the balance port and the battery is a 2S LiPo 2000 milliamp hour uh, that takes about three hours to charge with the stock charger there um, and as I mentioned in the X8W review the the battery plug type here is different from what it used to be uh, with the X8C um, and I think that I've got an old charging cable here from one of my Habaco planes, and this is called a Super Tiger plug, and that's T-I-G-R-E. Uh, but my charging cable is the same male plugs as the battery, so they don't, they don't plug in together. I can't use this to actually charge. So I don't know if they make the charging cable with female plugs or not. I'll have to look into that. Uh, but for those that are looking to get their own charging cable, I do believe that this plug type is called Super Tiger. Um, anyway, so uh, for the, the flight times, with the camera attached and recording, uh, the camera, by the way, it does use the quads battery. It plugs in. It does not have its own battery. Uh, so it doesn't operate on its own. There's no like manual controls on it or anything. So that's a little bit disappointing. Uh, that you can't take this camera off and just use it like a video camera on its own because it is good enough quality uh, for those that don't have a video camera they probably would have liked to have been able to use this without the you know without having to have it attached to the quad uh, but anyway with the camera mounted running filming you know running off the the, the quads battery itself 
Uh, I still found that I got about 11 minute flight times, which is about what I've been getting with all of these models. Uh, so the extra weight of the camera, which by the way, the camera weighs 59 grams with the mount and everything. Um, that does not seem to have much effect on the flight time. Uh, so again, it was 11 minutes total, and that includes about a three minute long LVC warning. So you get about eight minute flights and then three, three minute LVC warning beyond that. Uh, so really long LVC warning, plenty of time to get it back to yourself. Um, it has really big bright LEDs. You've got red in the front and green in the back, so a little bit backwards from what I would normally like, but whatever, they're nice and easy to see. Um, the LEDs also peek through the top here in these little windows, and then you've got these stripes on the front arm there. Uh, so all of that combined works really well for orientation. Uh, let's see. Let's cover the transmitter now. Um, so again, this is the same transmitter that's come with all the other X8 models. Um, nice big hobby grade style, you know, it's going to work well for pinchers or thumb flyers and fits really well in the hands. Uh, your left bumper is to change rates and you've got two different rates and then one yaw rate and it is a little bit slow. Um, but you know, it's pretty appropriate for an aerial videography quad, it's not a sport quad, so I think the yaw rate is understandable in that case. Um, and if you press and hold the left bumper, that'll turn on headless mode. And then the right bumper, you press and hold and move the right stick in whatever direction to do flips. And with a big quad like this, you know, flips are a little bit scary, so make sure you've got plenty of height before you try one of those. Um, I guess that about, oh, and the, uh, you operate the camera by pressing the throttle trim up or down. I think it's up for pictures and down for uh, video. And then the, uh, the video files will split themselves off at about the five minute mark. Uh, so I think it does that just in case, you know, it, it, you it crash or gets, loses power or something. That way at least you've got, you know, every five minutes the video is saved and you don't have to worry about losing it. Uh, because if you do forget to stop the video and you just power off the quad, that will corrupt the, the file um, on the camera and you'll lose that video. So you'll want to make sure to stop your video before turning off the quad. Um, and it does have a nice battery bay here on the back with plenty of room for, you know, your battery and cables and everything. And then it does have an on-off switch so you can get everything plugged in and closed up and then turn on the on-off switch when you're ready. Um, oh, and I forgot to mention too that you can recalibrate it. So you go bow sticks down left or both sticks down right and since it has headless mode one of those is headless mode and one of those is the accelerometer I'm not really sure which is which so just do both you got both down left both down right and that'll recalibrate everything um, and the camera here I'll go ahead and take it off uh, this is the same mount as all the other cameras so if they do end up selling this camera on its own you could buy this and mount this on your X8C or your X8W, so that's pretty cool that you, you know, you could just easily add this on. Um, and then, you know, it has this mount here that opens up, and then this little tab comes off, and then you can, I'll go ahead and unplug that. And then, so there's your camera there. And like, as I said, there's no, you know, manual operation buttons on it. You've got your, uh, switch between 720 and 1080p uh, and then that, that's your memory card let's see what it came with the memory card and it is a it's a four gigabyte memory card so pretty decently big um, but yeah again you know there's no there's no manual operation or anything it doesn't have its own battery so you've got to have it attached uh, to the quad in order to operate um, but it does have this little USB plug here, and that's what it you know it connects to the quad with. But you can also plug a USB cable into that and connect it to your computer, and then access the memory card that way um, right through the camera instead of having to take the card out and put it in a memory reader or whatever. So that way, you know, you don't have to take it out of this mount if you don't want to. You can leave it all in there plug your USB cable in and plug it in your computer and you're good to go. You don't have to get at that memory card that's closed away in the mount. Uh, so I thought that was pretty convenient. 
Uh, let's see, is there anything else to say about this one? Um, oh, the camera angle is not adjustable. This is kind of a, a solid position there, so you can't, you can't angle it down or anything. And it, it is a screw, and I tried unscrewing that, um, but it is just, I mean, it's just kind of hard. I can't really get that to show up too well on camera, but the these plastic parts just, they fit together like that. There is no rotation in them, so even if you undo that screw, it's not like you can change the angle and tighten it back up. The, the plastic only wants to fit together this way. Uh, so the camera can only face forward. You can't have it angled down more or anything. Uh, so I thought that was kind of weird. I mean, it looks like with the way the mount is designed, they very easily could have made it so you could adjust that angle. So I guess that's probably the one complaint I have about the camera. Um, okay, so yeah, that's about all I've got to say about it. So I'm gonna go ahead and since I've got you know the really nice camera footage on this one, I've already done the sample footage if you haven't seen that. And I flew that out in front of the house. Uh, so for this flight review, I'm going to take this to a new special location and do some filming, you know, that hopefully will give us some cool views. So let's go check that out. All right, this is the flight review of the Sima X8G with the cool camera on it. And I'm out at a new filming location that should hopefully give us some cool views. So I'll go ahead and just take her for a spin first and then we'll start the camera up and do some filming. Flying on high rates. A little bit of a breeze out today, but shouldn't be a problem. So it still flies just like the other X8s, even with the little bit heavier camera, it doesn't seem to have much effect. Still flips pretty well. Alright, now let's Bring it a little bit closer to so I can make sure the camera starts up fine. Alright, I believe it's filming now. And I think I'll probably do just full screen aerial video. Don't even mess with the picture in picture since you probably won't really even be able to see it well enough. We'll just focus on how good the onboard video looks. I'll try to get a decent bit of height so we can get a nice view hopefully a little bit of a breeze up there pushing it around maybe we can see our uh, assembly hall right here maybe don't really know where exactly the camera is looking but I'm at the U of I campus, so we got the, our assembly hall, which is our basketball stadium and concert venue. And then we also have the football field over here, which may or may not be in view. Kind of hard to keep it steady up there. It's getting pushed around a little bit. Hopefully I'm getting some decent views. Bring it down a little bit and do some flight footage. Mainly just focusing on the camera with this one since we've already seen plenty of flight footage from the other versions. Orientation gets kind of weird up there at a height. Can't see really the lights or the stripes and it all just kind of starts to look like silver and black mushed around together.
hopefully I'm getting some good footage. <laughs> Not really sure what to expect from the view up there, if these trees are going to block most of it or what. So, going to try some height from a few different positions, see what I get. Alright, well, let's bring her back. I think that was a pretty good sample, pretty long flight. Stop the camera. Find a nice flat spot to land. And there we go. That is the end of the flight review of the Sima X8G with the cool little uh, GoPro like camera on it. I like this one for a you know entry level aerial video quad with you know onboard camera that you don't have to mess with adding your own to it. This is the way to go. This is definitely a nice package. Alright, well thanks for watching. Check the video description for a price and purchase link, and I'll see you next time.